All right, and welcome back to the last video on pattern matching, where we'll just be discussing a few prerequisites and computational resource information. What about prerequisites? Well, pattern matching requires STAS or a self-hosted Cassandra and an indexing database. So this is the first time that Elastic is really important. You need an indexing database. Detecting patterns on one parameter? Well, that's supported since version 10.07. So already for quite a long time. The patterns on multiple parameters are only supported since 10.4.0. So this is a more recent addition. You can easily tweak the pattern matching functionality to your liking. It's in the usual location in the system center in Cube. You can there enable or disable the feature, and you can decide how much memory resources pattern matching can take at most. So, what are the resources that pattern matching is using? Well, if you're not detecting patterns in real time, then actually the resources are completely ignorable because actually pattern matching doesn't do any action unless you open the trend graph and then it just does a quick match of the pattern over your data. So here, there's not really much to say. However, what if you're detecting patterns in real time? because you want to see a warning when those patterns happen again. Well, in that case, the CPU usage is still ignorable, but there is something interesting to say about the memory usage. Namely, assume that you have a parameter P and that you're tracking a pattern on P of size 200. So you have a pattern consisting of 200 points. In order to see if this pattern occurs again, we're going to look at the most recent endpoints of the parameter. If the most recent, say 10 points of this parameter, look like the first 10 points of your pattern, we're going to keep these 10 points in memory. And we wait. If then, say, the, first, the, the, the most recent 20 points look like your pattern, look like the first 20 points of your pattern, you're also going to keep these in memory. Right? And you're going to keep the recent behavior of your parameter in memory as long as it coincides with what your pattern looks like. As long as that's the case, you keep it in memory. So how much trend data do you keep in memory? Well, at most the length of your pattern and not more than that. Voila. And that's it. That's all there is to say memory-wise. Typically, this means that we will not use a lot of memory and we will definitely not use a lot of CPU. But if you feel a bit hesitant and you really want to restrict the amount of memory that pattern matching can use, well, then you can easily do that in the system center. Okay, and that's it. Uh, the only thing that I want to mention is that there are plenty of references to check out in the docs. There are also plenty of blog posts and use cases that are described on our community platform. So check that out. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again, where we'll be talking about relation learning. All right, see you again next week.